Hi, it's Dustin Lanier. Thanks for listening. Please find me on LinkedIn for original public sector operations content every week. And please reach out to me if I and my team of procurement professionals at Civic Initiatives can help you be a public procurement change agent. This morning, we're going to talk to Mediacy, and I'll let him pronounce his last name, about the upcoming conference, the Smart Procurement World Conference. I'll have a speaking role in it, and I'm excited to have been invited. So, Mediacy, why don't you introduce yourself and talk about a little bit about what this conference is? Great stuff. Thank you very much, Dustin. My name is Media Simundekwa, and I'm head of content at Smart Procurement World. So let me just start off by introducing what Smart Procurement World is. You know, Smart Procurement World is Africa's biggest procurement and supply chain event. It's a business connection event, you know, that has gained popularity over the years. And what we try to do is to bring international best practice as a benchmark to help procurement and supply chain professionals here in Africa to up to speed with the general demands of the, of the industry at the moment. The event itself is quite committed to pushing the agenda of professionalization of procurement, and it is co-hosted with ABSA, which is one of the biggest banks here in South Africa, and they support enterprise and supplier development, which is an initiative that is aimed at assisting small businesses and to help them grow until they can become economic players. So in a nutshell, this is the most profound procurement event in Africa. You know, in the physical world, we would attract over 3,000 people, but still we managed to get over 600 CPOs to support our virtual initiatives. Our theme this year is called Redefine, obviously coming out of COVID and starting to live with COVID as it were. We are asking the question, how can procurement and supply chain professionals come with good ideas that help businesses recover and help governments to come back again uh, with all those economic development initiatives. The idea is to think about practical ways of surviving COVID. And this is where we are pressing our big reset button and say procurement people, let's redefine ourselves. Let's redefine our approaches. Let's do things differently and better and take this opportunity as a way to build back better. So how many speakers do you have and how long is it going? So this is a four-day event, uh, but we are split across because it's actually a virtual event, right? Um, so we have got two days of conference and two days of workshops. Um, and we have over, at, the, at this stage, we have got about 96 speakers confirmed going through the, uh, the four days. So it's going to be a very powerful, jam-packed event a rich in content. And Justin, it's a pleasure that you, are, you have accepted this speaking slot as well. And so uh, you asked me to do a little bit on both general approach to strategic sourcing and what does that phrase mean and, and how does one think about it? And then also pick up some themes around when there are choices on engaging the private sector as a business partner and when is the best time to do something via a contract as opposed to via insourcing. And in a lot of ways, that topic is interesting because it's not binary. It's not that you do everything internal and everything external because government programs are very rarely given the amount of staffing allocations necessary to do all the work that policy makers give to them. So we almost always have vendors for portions of our work. And in some cases we may choose to engage in a in taking a segment that has been done internal and take it external but it has to be done well and has to be done with the right constructs and provisions and market research and professional procurement people to understand how to go to market but yet also retain the muscle memory on what we're asking the market to do so that if we need to take that back over or reassess it or reevaluate it that we have that strength and you were telling me before we started recording that some of those topics are timely in South Africa. Yes. So for you to just, for me to just give you a bit of context, I think the good best way to look at this is to consider the context. Uh, in South Africa, if you know our history of apartheid and all those kind of things, some margins of the community have very much been isolated from becoming economic players. And they are looking at the government to really 
do something about it now to improve the lives of people. So when they look at government, they look at opportunities for employment and it doesn't matter how much workforce the government has to take up on this, they have to just uh, bring people on board and create employment. But that's a problem because we are also coming from COVID-19 and we are trying to recover economically. And the government is also looking at ways to shed its bloated workforce and wage bill. And so the only constructive way of approaching this is to consider some outsourcing possibilities and work together with private sector on some initiatives and so that the government can actually concentrate on its core mandate, which is service delivery and economic uh, development. But that is not well received in some quarters in South Africa. We have had campaigns around um, outsourcing must fall. So when government has to consider outsourcing, questions come up. How do you do it right? Is there scope for outsourcing in public sector? And, um, you know, how can you do it in such a way that it still um, uh, balances off those uh, imbalances of the past, as it were, and yet continue to serve the government's agenda to recover quickly from COVID? So that's, in a nutshell, what we are trying to address with this particular session. Well, and I'll pick up the three or four major situations in which using a vendor partner as opposed to doing stuff with internals tends to make the most sense and then talk about how you try to create performance measures that allow you to track the productivity of what's being done and keep the vendor aligned, keep their interests aligned with the interests of the state. Any tool that is used poorly is going to look like a poor tool. So how do you use that kind of, when do you make the decision about using that kind of tool and how do you use it well? So I look forward to doing a little content on that for you. So if anyone was listening and was like, this is super interesting, I want to participate. How do people actually attend this event? What do they have to do? I mean, it's a virtual event. So can anybody sign up for it? Is it only for uh, that audience in South Africa or how does that work? Yes. So basically everyone can sign up because it's virtual, right? And this year we've just opened it up to the public. It's absolutely free. Uh, that's just, I think, uh, in dollar terms, it's about, yeah, about $50, I think, which is 750 rands, about $50, just an administration fee uh, that we're asking. But basically it's a free event and we've opened it up uh, for everyone to attend. So if you are keen to attend, just visit the website Smart procurementworld.com. It's a long one, but uh, that's where you get all the necessary information. And critically important for US people, South Africa is uh, seven hours ahead of central time. I did negotiate with you to have it be at 6 a.m., I believe, central time, but then now I'm going to be on the West Coast while this is going on. So I didn't necessarily do myself a lot of favors. Four in the morning, I'll be bright and bushy tailed with some coffee and maybe an espresso shot. Thank you very much. We really appreciate all your commitment and uh, making yourself available for this. And that's the thing we're looking forward for it. It's going to be a very interesting event. Yeah, I was, uh, I was pleased that you invited me and I look forward to trying to mix it up and do some different things. So thanks yeah. so much. Look forward to it. And again, what's the date on that? I don't think we said the date. Yeah, so the date is actually the 13th and the 14th of September. Uh, so it's just literally in the next three, four weeks. Thank you so much. Hi, it's Dustin Lanier. Thanks for listening. Please find me on LinkedIn for original public sector operations content every week. And please reach out to me if I and my team of procurement professionals at Civic Initiatives can help you be a public procurement change agent.